Hello, and welcome to Logarithmic Functions and Models. This is just the basics. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. So let's start, what is a logarithm? Well, the base b logarithm of x, which we write as a log base b of x, notice that b, the base, it's kind of in the basement, right? It's written a little bit lower, it's a subscript. So log base b of x is the power to which we need to raise b in order to get x. All right, so what did I just say? Log base b of x equals y means that b to the y equals x. The most important thing you can keep in mind is that a logarithm is just a power. It's just an exponent. We have two logarithmic bases that are used most frequently. The common log is base 10, and it's used so commonly that instead of writing the base of 10, we just leave it out, just like when we have square roots. And if we have a, a square root of x, we automatically know that's a square root because nothing's written. But if we have a cube root, we have to write the cube. If we have a 17th root, we have to write the 17. So we have the same type of idea in other notations. The one that's used most frequently, we frequently don't have to write uh, the clarifier. Also, science and mathematicians use base e, the natural logarithmic base, frequently, and it is so frequently used, it has its special notation, uh, ln of x, from the Latin logarithmicae naturalis, all right? It's an L, not an I, people. Logarithms, it's an L. Ln of x. So you'll find these two buttons on your calculator, whereas the base could be any positive number except for one. We can't write all those on our calculator. All right, so let's go back and forth. Remember that log base b of x equals y is the same as b to the y equals x. Keeping this in mind, if we look at 9 equals 3 squared, then I say 2 is the power. All a log is is an exponent, right? So 2 is the power to which I raise 3 in order to get 9. 9 equals 3 squared. 1 over 125 equals 5 to the negative 3. That's a fact. Let's rewrite it. Negative 3 is the power I put on 5 in order to get 1 over 125. So log base 5 of 1 over 125 equals negative 3. How about you give this one a shot? 2401 equals 7 to the 4th power. Pause. See what you can do. Now we bring it back together. 4 is the power, all a log is is a power, to which I raise 7 in order to get 2, 4, 0, 1. Great job. Again, rewrite in the opposite form. Uh, log base 2 of 8 equals 3. And I remind myself that 3 is the logarithm, so 3 is the power, to which I raise 2 in order to get 8. 3 is the power that I put on 2 in order to get 8. Number 5, log of 10,000 equals 4. If there's no base written, it's assumed to be a base of 10. Remember, the log is an exponent, so 10 to the 4th equals 10,000. Number 6, natural log of 7 equals x. Remember, this is a special one. Hit pause, give it a shot on your own. You didn't even hit pause, did you? You know the base is e, right? The log equals the exponent, so the log equals x. x is the exponent. x is the power I put on e in order to get 7. All right, rewriting one form to the other. This is going to be useful to us uh, in our application problems. Now, as I mentioned earlier, base 10 and base e are the most commonly used. And most calculators have buttons that show log and natural log. Uh, frequently to the left of 7 if you're using a, a 7 and 4 if you're using a graphing calculator. Uh, they might also be in the uh, top 3 or 4 rows of a scientific calculator. Uh, we can change to any base. All right? So if I have, I don't know, log base 6 of 15, and I don't like 6s for some reason, I don't know. Maybe I want to write that as log base 7 because that's a lucky number for me. 
I don't know, I don't have log lucky numbers, but many people do. Log base seven of six. So you could change it to any base. The reason that we use these specific change of base formulas is because the common log and the natural log are on the calculator. So if you're trying to evaluate log base six of 15 on a calculator, it'd be so much easier. But we can change to any base that we want. All right, so here's where we're gonna use them. Use logarithms to solve. Anytime we're trying to get the exponent, excuse me, the variable out of the exponent, we're gonna switch to logarithmic form, right? Because all the log is, is an exponent. So 4 to the x equals 3. Well, I know 4 to the first power is 4, and 4 to the 0 power is 1, so x must be somewhere between 0 and 1. But I don't know exactly what, and I'm not going to try that guess and check game. So x is the power I put on 4 in order to get 3. I can rewrite it in logarithmic form. Now I'm going to use the change of base formula. It's a log of 3 divided by log of 4. The 4 is already written a little bit lower. It's the base. It goes in the basement of the fraction. Stupid little memory tricks. They're the ones that work the best. And on a calculator, log of 3 over log of 4. Notice the use of parentheses. And I can round to four decimal places and find that's 0.79. That, that goes well with my guess, right? X had to be between 0 and 1. Hey, look, I got an answer between 0 and 1. That's good. We know we're probably right. If I have 6 to the 3x plus 1 equals 30, I'm going to rewrite it in logarithm, uh, logarithmic form so I can get the variable out of the exponent. Rewriting it, 3x plus 1, so 3x plus 1 is the power, it's all the log is, is an exponent, to which I raise 6 in order to get 30. Now, I want to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And to get x completely by itself, I'm going to divide by 3. And this is a great answer if you're looking for the exact answer. Right? The exact answer is logarithmic form. It's important to keep in mind that this 30 is inside parentheses. I'm not going to subtract 1 from the 30. I'm not going to subtract 1 from the 6. Log base 6 of 30 is a single number unto itself. After you do that, then you subtract 1. And after you subtract 1, then you divide by 3. This 3 doesn't go into the 30. This 3 doesn't go into the 6. Log base 6 of 30 is a single number. And then we subtract 1, and then we divide by 3. And if you want to put it on a calculator, notice the use of parentheses. Uh, log base 6 of 30 can be written as log of 30 divided by log of 6. Right? Base is in the denominator. Minus 1. And since there's something going on in this numerator, I have to tell my calculator, hey, that entire thing is the numerator. So do that entire thing, and then I'll divide by 3. Turns out my answer is 0.2994, rounded to four decimal places. All right, very important that you tell your calculator exactly how you want it to evaluate. Your calculator's pretty quick, but I guarantee you're smarter than your calculator. In order to solve an exponential equation, we first want to isolate the exponential part. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5.3. Remember, order of operations tells us we can't multiply here because this exponent's messing things up. So let's divide it to the other side. 10 to the x equals 2 over 5.3. In order to get x by itself, it's in the exponent. So x is the power. I put on 10, notice the base of 10, so I don't have to write the base on the logarithm, in order to get 2 over 5.3. This is a base 10 logarithm. We don't need to change a base formula. We just type it into the calculator, as seen here, in order to do estimations. Now, it used to be that these logarithms, you could find them in a table. You'd have to look it up in a book and have logarithmic tables, but Fortunately, we have scientific and graphing calculators now, and it saves us a ton of time. It's great to be alive in the modern age. If we have 4 times 1.5 to the 2x minus 1 equals 8, we're going to use all these techniques together. So first of all, we isolate the exponential part. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. When I divide the left side by 4, I cancel out my 4 that's in front, when I divide the right side by 4, 8 over 4 gives me 2. If 1.5 to the 2x minus 1 equals 2, then 2x minus 1 is the power to which I raise 1.5 in order to get 2. Right? Just say it as you go along. Don't forget the log is the exponent, so whatever the exponent is is equal to the logarithm. 
base of the exponential, base of the log, same value. We're going to add 1 to both sides and then divide by 2 in order to get the x completely by itself. On a calculator, I would enter log base 1.5 of 2 as log of 2 divided by log of 1.5. Add 1. Don't forget to put that entire numerator in parentheses. You're smarter than your calculator. You have to tell it what to do. And then divide by 2 in order to get your value. When you get an answer an approximate of 1.3548, you could always take that back up here. Do 2 times 1.3548, subtract 1. Now make that the exponent on 1.5, and then multiply that answer by 4, and you'll get something really close to 8. Now, what are we going to do with logarithmic identities? We can manipulate our equations a little bit. Yes, I just moved that. That wasn't your eyes freaking out on you. Um, we have some rules that follow from the laws of exponents that are uh, laws of logarithms as well. Log base b of x times y is the log base b of x plus log base b of y. Let me uh, write a couple details here. First of all, x and y are positive. Uh, b is positive and not equal to 1. And r is any real number. Yep, that says real number. Looks like veil. There we go. Real number. Why is that? Well, remember, when you're multiplying two things with the same base, you add their exponents. Right? b to the x plus y. My goodness, my writing. There we go. Right? And the same property holds for logarithms. All a log is is an exponent. So if you're multiplying two things with the same base, you add their exponents. If you're dividing two things with the same base inside of a logarithm, you'll subtract the exponents. All a log is is an exponent, so you'll subtract the logs. A power, right? a log is just a power. Raised to a power, you multiply. And then, now let's think about this. What power, because all a log is is a, is a power. What power do I put on B to get B? Oh, that's the first power, right? It's just B. What power do I put on B in order to get 1? Well, for b values greater than 0, so b values not equal to 0, uh, anything other than 0 raised to the 0 power gives me 1. Uh, negative exponent type of rule, negative logarithms. Log base b of 1 over x is negative log base b of x. And the generalized change of base formula that I kind of mentioned earlier, but here it is written in type, er, typed out, I guess. So uh, it's a fact. Let's do some examples. How long will it take a $500 investment to be worth $700 if it is continuously compounded at 10% per year? Round to the nearest tenth of a year. Now, I have different colors highlighted here. So we're going to break this down as we go along. How long? That tells me to find time. Will it take a $500 investment? So. $500 is my principal, my amount that I invest. To be worth, so in the future, $700, so I'm going to let A be $700. Continuously compounded, and we saw that equation, uh, that formula in our exponential functions and models, and that's A equals P, E to the RT. At 10% per year, that's an interest rate. Interest rates given to us in percentages, but we all do, always do the calculations in decimals. So each little thing here tells us something specific as we're reading through. And don't forget, round to the nearest tenth of a year uh, as we get our answer. So find t when p equals 500, a equals 700 with r equals 10%. We'll substitute a is 700, equal sign, p is 500, e, r is 0.10. We want to find time t. Notice how the t is in the exponent. Since the t is in the exponent, we're going to convert to logarithms. But before we do that, our first step is we want to isolate the exponential part. I do that by dividing both sides by 500. 700 over 500, I'm going to call 7 fifths. Yes, that's the same as 1.4. But I'm going to leave it as 7 fifths because my calculator can handle that no problem. 7 fifths equals e to the 0.10t. Well, Convert, once I have the exponential part isolated, I convert to logarithmic form. 0.10t 
is the power to which I raise e, special notation ln, in order to get 7 fifths. To get t by itself, we're now going to divide by 0.10, and I will type this in my calculator just as it's written, an ln, and then most calculators will prompt, uh, excuse me, prompt the parentheses. If yours doesn't, make sure you put those in there. Parentheses around the 7 fifths, close the parentheses, divide by 0.10, and we'll get about 3.4 years. So leave your $500 in this account for 3.4 years, and it'll grow to $700. One more example. How long to the nearest year will it take an investment to triple if it is continuously compounded at 12% per year? Well, how long asks us to find t, and it tells us how to round. Continuously compounded tells us the formula we're going to use. Triple the investment. It doesn't tell us how much to start. Huh. But we do know 12% per year we're going to use in decimal form as 0.12. So, this is one way to do it, and I actually, I wouldn't recommend this way. I'm going to show you something else, but we'll go through this one first. So let's just assume, all right, that P equals 100. It doesn't tell us how much we started with, so let's just assume 100, and then our future amount is triple, 300. Well, then 300 equals 100 e to the 0.12t. We solve it just like the previous example. We're going to divide both sides by 100. We'll get 3 equals e to the 0.12t rewrite in logarithmic form. 0.12t is the natural log of 3, right? Now, base e, log base e. And when I type that into my calculator, I get 9.155 years. But hopefully you're asking yourself, well, what if it's more than 100, right, to start? What? We don't even know. What about this? If P is our initial investment, then A is three times as much. It doesn't even matter if it's a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. Let's say we invest P. Then we know our A value is triple that. And so my formula will be 3P equals P E to the 0 0.12 T. And when I divide both sides by P, I end up with 3 equals e to the 0 0.12t. The same thing I have right there. So it doesn't matter how much the initial investment is. If it's tripling, we could go general and use the generic form. Well, A is triple, whatever your principle was. Or you can use a particular example. I know that for some of my students, they do prefer having actual numbers. Variable manipulation is a little challenging at times. It's one of those things you want to get to eventually. Uh, but for now, if you want to just try a couple of values, make sure you get the same answer. We'll develop that, that uh, symbolic ma manipulation as we move on through the semester. All right, that's it for part one on logarithms, just the basics. The next video is... Uh, Exponential growth and decay.